Hello everyone. Today we are going to start with the introduction to what CPU is in a computer system architecture. So a CPU consists of three parts as you know. They are the registers, the ALU and obviously the third part is the control unit. What is the function of resistors? They store the data, help in the calculations, transfer the data. ALU is the arithmetic and logical unit which actually performs the calculations. Okay. Performs operations. This is related to that data. Then control unit is the one that supervises, supervises and controls the working of ALU and registers and whosoever uh, programs a computer in the machine or, the, uh, or in the assembly language he or she must be aware of the register set and the memory structure and the data supported by the instructions and the function that each unit performs obviously only then it will be able to write down any program so we are going to do the general register organization now for that we need to know a diagram So we have, suppose we have taken 7 registers, R1, two, three. okay, so we have 2 muxes, okay. one and mux two we have three input lines they are known as the select a and here also we have three input lines known as the select b okay the all these registers input or you can say yeah all the registers they go from they go to both of these okay So you have to complete it like all the registers are connected. Here also, then they will be connected. Okay, so what is happening is input from one of these registers goes to bus A, okay, A bus, and input from one of these registers goes to bus B then it goes into the arithmetical and logical unit which gives us the output or you can also store the output in any one of these registers now in which register you will store will be selected via 3 into 8 B multiplexer okay so what will happen this will send me the So here I'll give the select lines for and they will be called SELD. So basically what is happening, we have seven registers in the memory, okay. These have to, these will act as both the input and the output uh, for the data, right. So suppose I have uh, data in register R1 and R2 and I want to store my addition in R3. So what I will do is I will select with the help of this select A, I will allow the data of R1 to enter bus A. And with the help of select B, I will allow the data of R2 to enter uh, this bus B. So what will happen after that, the data of R1 is in A bus, that of R2 is in B bus. So now the data will go to ALU, the operation A plus B will be formed. And then we can take it as an output on any of the device or wherever we want. Or what we can do is, we can give it back to one of the registers and we wanted to store it in the register number 3. So that will be decided by SE. 
एस ई एल डी दैट इज एस ई एल डी विल डिसाइड दी आउटपुट रजिस्टर सो बेसिकली वॉट इज हैपनिंग इज द आउटपुट ऑफ ईच ईच रजिस्टर इज कनेक्टेड टू द मल्टीप्लेक्सर्स ओके टू फॉर्म द टू बसेज ए एंड बी सिलेक्ट दीज आर द सेलेक्ट लाइन्स ओके एंड ए एंड बी फॉर्म्स द इनपुट टू द ए एल यू राइट एंड देन द रिजल्ट ऑफ माइक्रो ऑपरेशन दिस इज अवेलेबल एज आउटपुट डाटा एंड ऑल्सो इट कैन गो टू द इनपुट रजिस्टर एंड द रजिस्टर दैट रिसीव द इन्फॉर्मेशन विल बी सिलेक्टेड बाय द डी कोडर ना द नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट यू नीड टू नो इज द कंट्रोल वर्ड सो अ कंट्रोल वर्ड कंसिस्ट ऑफ लेट मी मेक हेयर ओनली इट विल कंसिस्ट ऑफ फोर पार्ट्स ओके वॉट इज अ वर्ड अ वर्ड इज अ कलेक्शन ऑफ विट्स सो ओके सो फाइव बिट्स फॉर द ओपर एंड एंड थ्री थ्री बिट्स each for the select lines select a select b and select d that is select the input register a select the input register b and set the select the output register or you can say the register where i want to store my output and this is the operate uh, operation that is uh, supposed to be performed on the uh, performed by the instruction so now how we we going to take an example what basically happens is we have certain values binary 00001010011 so input input and this is none maybe you can say available for output this is r1 to r7 this is also r1 to r7 this is also r1 to r7 and so you will be given a you will be given a, a control word suppose say give the instruction for 01001010011001 so what you have to do is you have to divide it in the form of control word you have to take the first 3 bits then the 3 bits then the next 3 bits and the 5 bits so these 3 bits will uh, will tell me the input register a then this will tell me the input register b this will tell me the destination register and this will tell me the operation that is to be performed 00101 so by default we have uh, the operation 00101 as uh, subtraction operation this we have a table that you can refer to from the book and we have a table so in that it is mentioned that 00101 is a subtraction operation so what we have to do we have to subtract the this thing 010 is register Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so zero one zero is register three. Okay, so that is register three, comma zero one one. Zero one one is register four, and zero zero one is register one. And this zero 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 one zero one stands for subtraction. That is, I have to subtract the contents of R three. and r4 and i have to store the result in r1 so that is what this control word specifies okay so uh one more thing that's all for the example one more thing that you need to know is that the control uh, or you can say the memory unit that controls the con that stores the control word is known as a control memory what is a control memory a control memory is that part of memory that stores the control word control word control word is what we we just did now it is a group of bits which specify select line a select line b select line d and the operand okay so 
by reading the consecutive control words it is possible to initiate so obviously this control word one control word means that i have one operation now if i have multiple control words this is one i have one more here then i have one more here then it obviously means that i can generate a sequence of micro operations and in this way we can we can uh, form a or we can have a micro program and what is a micro program it is a collection of operations or collection of in, uh, instructions so if i have a number of control words they can lead me to form a micro program okay so uh, that's all about this in the next uh, video we'll discuss about the stack organization so thank you for watching and please do like share and subscribe my videos for uh, uh, further updates okay thank you hello everyone in this video we are going to study about the hello everyone in this video we are going to study about the stack organization in computer system organization so what basically is a stack the stack follows the lifo order that is it is a collection of consecutive memory cells and what happens i put on uh, i when i start putting items in the stack like a b c d i am following this uh, this approach that is i put an item then on the top of that one more item what is a stack a stack is basically you can say like we have a pile of books we have a pile of uh, anything you can have a pile of uh, notes the currency notes you can have a pile of books so that is what a stack is stack is a pile the stack follows a leaf order that is the last in first out see how it follows is suppose i have uh, three numbers a b three integers or you can say variables a b and c so first i put a then i put b then i put c the the variable or the integer you can say sorry the variable that was put at the last i will remove it first only then i will be able to assess a right i cannot simply you know take out a from here i have to first take out c then the stack will be what a comma b then i have to take out b the stack will be a only then i'll be able to take out a from here that that is what stack is okay so and uh, we have one more term that is the stack pointer what is the stack pointer the stack in a digital computer is essentially a memory unit with an address register that can count only after an initial value is loaded into it what does that mean that means that the starting now what did i tell you that stack is a memory uh, this is a pile of memory so the starting point of that memory you can say uh, is the stack pointer this is when there is no element in the stack so what will happen whenever i uh, perform an operation on the stack what is the stack pointer stack pointer is basically the pointer you can say the register that stores the address of top of the stack okay you can say that so there there are two operations that you perform on the stack the first is the push operation and the second is the pop operation push means inserting some elements into the stack and pop means deleting the elements from the stack okay so what happens is we going to study about the push operation now whenever we have to push something into the stack here is my stack pointer suppose okay no this is my uh, suppose this is my stack pointer okay so when i have a new element d i want to push it into the stack so first i will increment the stack pointer i will increment the stack pointer that is sp is equal to sp is equal to sp plus 1 and then i will put the element b at the top of the stack so till when can i put the elements until the stack is full but how will i check whether the stack is full or not so suppose i have the six bits of memory so that is uh, this thing i'll the stack starts from 0 1 2 goes on up till 63 i have taken 63 as my value so th that's uh, that totally depends on you you can take here uh, any any length of the memory okay i have taken an example as 63 so suppose this thing right 
so what happens is when you reach here this means it is 0 0 0 0 0 0 suppose it has the uh, word can contain only six bits of uh, six bits right so when it goes to one it becomes 0 0 0 0 0 1 2 so on so when it reaches 63 it reaches up till here now when I add plus one to this that is when my element when the stack when the stack has reached this element suppose x now when I the stack pointer is pointing over here when I want to insert one element to the stack I have to increase sp so sp sp value is this okay and now I am saying that I want to increase sp so sp has to become sp plus one right sp has to become sp plus one so what is going to happen when I add plus one to this plus one to this value what will happen is zero 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 and one carry since it is only it can only contains the six six bits the first six uh, the six bits from the least significant digit towards this side so what will happen this one will get discharged okay so that is the value left will only be zero that is after this the stack pointer will reach here that is we get the condition for the stack to be full when is the stack full when it, re it reaches over here when it reaches over here if i do sp is equal to sp plus one what will it lead to it will lead me to zeroth position so what happens when we have to write the condition for uh, when sp is, is at zero sp is at zero so is the stack empty yes the stack is empty is the stack empty yes so empty will be set to one and is the stack full no the stack is not full i can insert more elements in it so zero but when the stack is full when stack is full what will happen when sp is at the maximum if the sp is max so what will happen if i try to add push if i try to add one more element what will happen sp will go to zero okay and uh, full will be set to one that's it okay the stack is full so now again what will happen see this is what this is the initial conditions right this is the initial uh, condition of the stack when none of the element has been added to the stack right this is the initial condition when the stack pointer was here okay and uh, it had to still fill up the elements now once it reaches over here it again goes here but now the thing is that the stack is full and empty is equal to zero so that is i can push the elements into the stack only till this condition is true when full is equal to is equal to no that means i can push the elements into the stack full is equal to no means the stack is not yet full it has more capacity i can put more elements into the stack so that is about the push operation now we will uh, study the uh, pop operation in the pop operation what happens is first you have to in the pop operation this is the stack suppose stack pointer this is the top of the stack if i have to uh, pop this thing b from the stack so first i will store this into some register and then i will decrement the stack pointer by one sp is equal to sp minus one so in the push operation first we incremented the sp and then we added the data but in the pop operation first we have to extract this data from the top of the stack and store it somewhere and then we have to decrement the sp that is sp is equal to sp minus one so the instructions that will take place is that in some data register we are going to store whatever is present at the stack pointer okay and then we will say sp is equal to sp minus one so this is what is happening what is this in some data register dr is a data register in some data register we have stored the contents of memory pointed by the stack pointer okay now suppose if sp is equal to zero then what does it mean here it was right it was this thing zero one two when sp was pointing to zero that means the stack is 
the stack is empty the empty the stack is empty yes so empty will be set to 1 and full be, full will be set to 0 so we cannot pop we cannot pop from the stack if empty is equal to 1 but we can always push right push and pop are the two opposite operations why cannot we pop from the stack is empty is equal to 1 if empty is equal to 1 means the stack pointer is pointing to 0 that is there is no element in the stack there is nothing to pop so it will not pop okay so the next is that the the memory stack okay the stack can be a standalone or it can be it can be a standalone okay or it can be implemented in the random access memory in the uh, ram right attached to the cpu so a portion of memory is assigned to the stack operation and a processor register is used with the stack pointer so what is happening either we have a standalone stack that is we have a fixed stack in the memory and it is always there right or we can store we can make a stack in the memory ram memory ram uh, at that time with the help of the processor and then we can use it so the, there are three parts of a stack okay so this is it this is the memory unit which has been assigned for the stack suppose these are the addresses so maybe thousand two thousand three thousand three nine nine seven three nine nine eight so on up to four hundred okay so this is the stack okay and SP will be pointing somewhere in the stack, right? Then array, what is AR? AR is the address register. That is, points to the array of data. Here, data or the operands are present. Data operands, right? And PC, PC is the program counter that points to the next instruction. So, here the program is present. So, my memory unit it is divided into three parts the program the uh, the flow of the program is decided by the pc the program counter okay then we have the data and the operands uh, they are fetched into the program or with, uh, from the stack with the help of the ar that is the address register and what is the stack the stack is the memory location where we can push or pop and it is uh, regulated by the stack counter so uh, one more thing that you have to uh, uh, notice is that stack grows with decreasing addresses that is we started from 4000 the stack pointer was here we pushed something the address went to 3999 9, 9. then the address went to 3998 3997 9, up to 3000 that is the addresses are decreasing upwards decreasing upwards in a stack okay so next is how we are going to check the stack limits we can check the stack limits we can check the stack limits by using two processor registers okay simply we will do use two registers two registers one to check the upper limit of the stack okay and the other one to check the lower limit of the stack in the previous example in the previous example we have 4000 we had 3000 then we had 2000 and all but this was the part of the stack okay this was the part of the stack so the upper limit would be 3000 in the previous example and the lower limit would be 4000 so this would regulate the limit of the stack that is from this to this memory location i have uh, the uh, memory assigned as the stack memory so when uh, when it will reach the upper limit no more push operation will be formed and when it will reach the lower limit no more pop operation will be formed because it will reach here so it, nothing can be popped and it will reach here so nothing can be pushed into the stack because the stack is already sorry because the stack is already full okay so what is the advantage advantage of having a stack the advantage of using a memory stack is that cpu can refer to it without having to specify any address that is i don't have to say that memory of 3000 memory of 3001 memory memory 
3002 i don't have to say like this simply i have one stack i know that uh, i have a lot of consecutive memory a lot of consecutive data i have a stack pointer i simply have to refer to the stack pointer so, and i have to keep on incrementing the stack pointer by using the push up pop operations incrementing or decrementing and i will keep on getting the data that i have stored in the consecutive locations i don't have to write down the addresses again and again in the uh, uh, in this format so this will obviously reduce my complexity and it will help me to easily perform the calculations okay because the address will always be this address that's not that is not my headache that will be available this will be available in the stack pointer so that is the advantage of a stack uh, so in the next video we are going to discuss about the uh, reverse polish notations and actually the, the notations that we have to uh, express the arithmetic expressions or any of the uh, expression so we'll discuss that in the next video i hope you understood if you have any doubts or queries you can mail me at lastminutetutorials.com or you can also mention in the comment section and uh, in case of any doubts okay please like share and subscribe to my videos on my channel okay thank you for watching